Lent is the season of conversion, a time of freedom from slavery of sin. Therefore, let us welcome Lent as the great season in which God reminds us that He is our God who brought us out from the slavery of our sinfulness. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The things of the past shall not be remembered or come to mind. Instead, there shall always be rejoicing and happiness in what I create. For I create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and exult in my people. No longer shall the sound of weeping be heard there, or sound of crying. No longer shall there be in it an infant who leaves but a few days, or an old man who does not round out his full lifetime. He dies a mere youth who reaches but a hundred years, and he who fails of a hundred shall be thought accursed. They shall live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of the vineyards they plant. Responsorial Psalm I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime, his good will. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You change my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus left Samaria for Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that the prophet has no honor in his native place. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they themselves had gone to the feast. He returned to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. Now there was a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go, your son will leave. The man believed what Jesus said to him and left. While the man was on his way back, his slaves met him and told him that his boy would leave. He asked them when he began to recover. They told him, The fever left him yesterday, about one in the afternoon. The father realized that just at that time Jesus had said to him, Your son will leave. And he and his whole household came to believe. Now this was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. It took rock 
courage for a high-ranking court official to travel 20 miles in search of Jesus, the Galilean carpenter. He had to swallow his pride and put up with some ridicule from his cronies. And when he found the healer, carpenter, Jesus seemed to put him off with a blunt statement that people would not believe unless they saw some kind of miracle or sign from heaven. Jesus likely said this to test the man to see if his faith was in earnest. If he turned away in irritation or with discouragement, he would prove to be insincere. Jesus, perceiving his faith, sent him home with the assurance that his prayer had been heard. It was probably not easy for this man to return to his family with only an assuring word from Jesus that his son would be healed. Couldn't Jesus have come to this man's house and laid his hands on the dying child? However, without a moment's hesitation, the court official believed in Jesus and took him at his word. He began his journey back home with renewed faith and hope, ready to face whatever might await him, whether it be the anguish of his distraught family or the scorn of unbelieving neighbors. Before he could even make it all the way back to his home, news reached him that his son had recovered. What astonishment must have greeted this family and friends when they heard that his son was instantly restored to health at the very moment when Jesus had pronounced the words, Your son will leave. Jesus' miraculous healings show his generous kindness and extravagant love, a love that bends down in response to our misery and wretched condition. Is there any area in your life where you need healing, pardon, chains, and restoration? If you seek the Lord with trust and expectant faith, He will not disappoint you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, your love never fails and your mercy is unceasing. Give me the courage to surrender my stubborn pride, fear and doubts to your surpassing love, wisdom and knowledge. Make me strong in faith, persevering in hope and constant love. Amen. Amen.